Got another video on the 2016 Chrysler 300. Gonna be uh, replacing the front and rear brake pads along with new rotors as well. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and start out with the uh, front brakes and uh, I'm gonna need to jack it up. So you got a cross member that's uh, right, right underneath the skid plate here. Uh, just make sure you get on that cross member and we'll go ahead and jack this up and then we'll get a couple jack stands on the pinch welds. Next, take you a jack stand. You can see I got the other side already set up. We'll go right underneath this uh, little area here. Now we'll go ahead and lower it. Grab a 22 millimeter. Let's go ahead and remove our uh, lug nuts and then our wheel and tire. So with our wheel and tire off, let's go ahead and re uh, remove our caliper now. So come on the back side of the caliper here, you're gonna have two 13 millimeter bolts that you need to remove. So go ahead and do that. And you can see that started turning on me. So let me grab a wrench to hold that. So grab an 18 millimeter wrench. Go ahead and stick that on there to hold that. And then you can loosen this the rest of the way. And then of course, same thing on your top one here. So now let's go ahead and pull our caliper off here. And this should just slide off of here. You may have to use a screwdriver pry bar just to pry a little bit on it. Get that to come off there. And then you can take a caliper hook similar to that and just hang that there because you don't want the uh, brake line dangling there. Next, we need to remove the uh, caliper bracket here. So actually, let me take this up higher so we can get to those bolts back there. Just move this up out of the way. So come on the back side again, and you're going to have two 21 millimeter bolts we need to remove. So go ahead and pull those off. All right, guys, so these are really hard to get off for some reason. Um, let me go ahead, I'm gonna go ahead and turn this and then I'll get my impact on there and make it a little bit easier. All right, guys, so these are my impacts having trouble. These are probably the original want brakes and everything on this because this car only has uh, a little over 60,000 I think so let me keep trying here all right guys so finally I'm not sure why those were on there so tight it's almost like there was Loctite on the bolts or something. But you work up a sweat getting those off. So then what you can do, move my camera out here, go ahead and slide this whole caliper bracket off of here. Next we can go ahead and remove the rotor. And I can already tell that's seized on there as well. So if you want, you can spray some WD-40 in here. I'm gonna grab a hammer here and let's just see if we can knock it off. There we go. Go ahead and remove that. 
But next, I'm going to go ahead and take a wire brush and just clean up all along this hub here. Uh, just getting all that rust out of here. Now let's go ahead and uh, take a look at our caliper bracket here. So we can go ahead and uh, slide out these uh, pins here. So what you can do is just pull on those. Go ahead and pull them out. Just like that. And let's go ahead and get these uh, old brake pads out. So you can just kind of... And it looks like there's a tab. So let me grab a screwdriver. So you can see there's this little tab right here that kind of holds the pad in. So if you can just uh, push that in, pull out your old pad there. Same with this side here. Let's try this one. So there's those. And then what you can do is uh, take your screwdriver, get these old uh, brackets out of here. Next, I'm going to take my wire wheel or wire brush and just clean up where these brackets were. Same with on this side here really quick. Okay, so you can see, got that all cleaned up as best as I could. And uh, so what you want to do next, let's go ahead and uh, clean off these uh, caliper slide pins here. Just get all that old grease off of those. And if you want to, you can use your wire wheel on these as well. Clean them up a little better. And then uh, take a look at our new pads here. So I went with the, uh, it's the Power Stop Evolution Plus, uh, part number 17-1058. I'll put a link in the description for these. Let's go ahead and open this up. You can see you got your new clips. And then your uh, new pads. And normally these come with some uh, caliper grease and lube and all that, but I don't see any. Okay, well, luckily I do have some. Let me go grab it real quick. All right, so I do have some of this. Uh, it's the uh, Permatex Ultra Brake Parts Lubricant. I always just keep some of this on hand just in case, but I'm pretty sure I thought these came with the uh, lube, but... Oh, well, at least I got this. So what you want to do is uh, let's go ahead and coat our uh, caliper slide pins in this. Just go ahead and put some of that on there. You can use your fingers if you want. Just make sure these are all lubed up good. Same with this one here. that all lubed up and then what you want to do next is um, take your bracket here and I'm gonna put a little bit of that grease down in these grooves where the clips go in at so just take you a little bit in there rub some on there like that flip it over do the same thing here So just kind of like that. And then what you can do now is uh, go ahead and grab your slide pins here. And let's go ahead and stick those back in. And then go ahead and push those all the way in until that boot gets back on the uh, slide pin there. And you just want to make sure that moves freely like that. Do the same to this one here. Same thing. Make sure that moves freely. Next, go ahead and open up your clips here. Grab a couple of those. And let's go ahead and uh, get these snapped in here. So the way this sits in there, those just sit down in the groove like that. And what you do, 
just kind of push down. Make sure those kind of click in there like that. Same with this one here. Push them down in there just like that. And then next I'll show you what a uh, rotor went with. So it went with the uh, Power Stop Evolution coated and uh, it's going to be part number AR8359 EVC. And you can see it shows a vehicle position front there. I'll put a link in the description for these as well. But what's nice about these is they're coated so they will not rust. So I can pull this out of here. So that's what those look like. And uh, they're not coated with any oil or anything either. So we will not have to uh, clean them off or anything. So let's go ahead and uh, stick this on real quick. Actually guys, before I go ahead and uh, get the rotor on, let's go ahead and get that caliper, the pistons pushed back into the caliper there. Before you do that, go ahead and pop your hood. So with your hood popped, go ahead and uh, locate your uh, brake master cylinder, which is gonna be under this little plastic panel here. And it's probably hard for you guys to see this, but you want to make sure. So if I shine my light here, you can see that we're not full on brake fluid. So the max line is uh, probably right about at the top of this. And you don't want that to be filled all the way up uh, before you start pushing in those uh, pistons. Because once we start pushing in all those pistons on all four wheels, this brake fluid level is probably going to rise back up to the max line here. So that's why you never want to add brake fluid unless you know you have a leak or something. Um, it's designed to do this to where uh, once your brakes start getting uh, real low and they need replaced, this fluid level is gonna drop quite a bit. So I'll show you at the end here, once we get all four uh, wheels done and our pistons back into the calipers, I'll show you that this uh, level will probably be up to the maximum line. And if it is uh, over the max line, um, Without any of the pistons pushed into the calipers, most likely once you start pushing those in, you're gonna have brake fluid come out of the cap here, and then it's gonna start leaking down, making a mess. And you wanna make sure you don't get any uh, brake fluid on the paint, cause it'll eat it. So if you need to, you can use a fluid extractor just to take some of that fluid out if you have to. So go ahead and unhook your caliper from your little hook here. And then I'm just gonna kind of set it right here for now. And the way I like to do it is uh, take one of your old brake pads here. And you can see why I'm replacing this because uh, this one was really starting to dig into the rotor there, just from the rust and all that. So take your old pad there, stick it in there like that. Take you a C-clamp. And then what you wanna do is you can uh, just start tightening this up. And as you're tightening that, you can see those pistons starting to push back into the caliper there. So just keep tightening until you can't go anymore. And I'll, the, both of those pistons are pushed back into the caliper. So you can see about right there. Can't go anymore. So go ahead and back off your C-clamp. Remove your pad. And we'll go ahead and get this back out of the way. Hang it up here. Set that there like that. So I went ahead and cleaned this up as best as I could with a wire wheel. Didn't really get um, too clean, but that's okay. So now let's grab a rotor. Go ahead and stick that on. And then what I like to do is just take a uh, lug nut, just stick one of these on here just to keep that rotor from moving. And you can see you can't tighten it all the way, I guess, so that's better than nothing. So then go ahead and uh, take your caliper bracket. Let's go ahead and get this back in. And what I did 
was I took some uh, anti-seize. I coated these bolts in anti-seize and I ran them back through the brake caliper before I put this on. And uh, that seemed to loosen them up a little bit here. So let's go ahead and see if uh, these will go on nice and easy now. And you can see that's a lot better. So let's go ahead and get those snug. So with those uh, caliper bracket bolts snug, let's go ahead and turn this. That way we can get our torque wrench in there. And you're gonna torque those caliper bracket bolts to 98 foot pounds. Next, you can go ahead and grab your pads. And uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and take some of that same uh, lube I used on the pins. Go ahead and coat the uh, back of the caliper here and just do a light coat. And then just kind of smear it around here, just on this uh, backing pad. Let's get that kind of smeared around. Let me grab a rag. And then also just take a little bit here, just put on the ears here on the end. Just a light coat on those. Just make sure you don't get any on the pad itself. So just kind of rub that around on those. And then what you'll do is let's go ahead and get this slid in on the bottom portion there. And then come up to your top here. And then you can just go ahead and push this in all the way against the rotor there. Let's go ahead and do the uh, back side now. Okay, so same thing. Got this side all lubed up as well, as you can see. So we'll go ahead and get this in the bottom again. And then we'll swing it up to the top side there. And then you can just kind of Squeeze both pads together, just like that. So next, go ahead and uh, get your caliper unhooked here. And let's go ahead and slide this over. And you may need to press in on your slide pin holders there. Go ahead and grab your bolts here. Get those started. Grab your uh, 18 millimeter wrench again, and then your uh, 13 millimeter. Let's go ahead and get these snug. And then grab your torque wrench and you can torque those to 44 foot pounds each. Go ahead and swing this back around. You can pull off this lug nut here. And then what I like to do next is, uh, just in case you got any grease or anything on that rotor, just take some brake clean. Go ahead and spray this real quick. And if you can, on the back side as well. 
Then go ahead and grab your wheel tire. Let's go ahead and put that back on. Okay, so with this side all done, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, move on to the driver's side there. I'm not gonna record that side because it's probably gonna be the same. And then I'll come back and we'll start on the rears. All right, so as you can see, you got this side all done as well. And uh, this caliper bracket was the same as the other side, very hard to get off, but uh, got it all done here. So let me get this tire back on and then we'll go ahead and jack it up and uh, get our jack stands out of here. So now with both tires on, go ahead and grab your jack. Let's go ahead and jack it up and we'll get our jack stands out of there. I'm gonna grab a torque wrench. We'll go ahead and torque those lug nuts to 130 foot pounds. Okay, so with the front wheels all torqued, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, grab my smaller jack here and I'm gonna go right underneath this uh, plastic rubber plug here and then we can put our jack stand right there. And then go ahead and remove your wheel and tire. And then just like the fronts, we'll go ahead and remove the caliper here. So you got it. this is gonna be a 15 millimeter this time and then that's gonna be same 18 millimeter there. So grab your wrench. And let's go ahead and pull those off. With your top one here. Go ahead and slide your caliper off here. And this one you can just set on top here. Kind of like that. Okay, and then let's go ahead and remove these two 18 millimeter bolts holding our uh, caliper bracket on there. Hopefully these are easier to get off than the fronts were. Then go ahead and slide your caliper bracket out. And then same thing, try to get this rotor off. You can, I can already tell it's seized on there. So let me grab my hammer again here. Go ahead and slide that off. And if you guys are uh, pounding on that and that just does not want to come off, you may want to check your uh, brake shoes, your uh, parking brake shoes here. So there's a rubber plug back here that you can pull out and then you turn this dial uh, either way and that'll expand these shoes or bring them in and that'll help you get that off as well if it's not coming off. So then get you a drip pan here. Let's go ahead and uh, spray off our parking shoes down here. Uh, get these nice and clean. Okay, so just like the fronts here, let's go ahead and take our old pads and everything out, our slide pins here. So again, just go ahead and rip those out of there. Just hold on to the rubber there. And uh, go ahead and clean these up. And then let's go ahead and remove our old pads out of here. They should just pop out. Just like that. Get your screwdriver, pop off these brackets. And let me grab my wire wheel. I'll go ahead and clean these up. All right guys, so I went ahead and got those all cleaned up. And uh, let's go ahead and take a look at our new pads here. So same thing, went with the PowerStop Evolution Plus and the rear part number 17-1057. Got these off Amazon, put a link in the description. If you open them up, so we got our new clips. And then it actually comes with these new uh, rubber grommets here for our slide pins. So we'll go ahead and pull those off. 
And then uh, this is how it came. So I don't know if it, somebody returned it or if it was damaged just from shipping. But all the pads look okay. And uh, there is no lubricant in this box either. So they must not come with it. You can see how the box is kind of damaged too. So, so let's see if we can get uh, one of these out of here. So I'm just going to take a flathead screwdriver here. And let's just see if we can maybe hammer on this. A couple areas. Okay guys, so I was able to get this one out here and uh, let me show you how I did it. So I just took a, uh, just an old smaller flathead screwdriver here and I'll use my uh, foot here to kind of hold the caliper bracket and then just get up under there. Use your hammer. Just kind of pry as you're hitting it. You can see that pops right out like that. And then what you can do, take your two new ones here and uh, go ahead and kind of set that in there. Grab yourself a 17 millimeter socket and you can see this will fit right around that. It'd be perfect to uh, go ahead and hit this in with your hammer here. So try to get that in there evenly. It's just kind of hard to hold it here. Let me go ahead and try this on the ground there. Just kind of get your foot in there again. Looks like we need to go just a little bit more. So just like that. Let's do this other one here. Just like that looks good and then of course take your uh, caliper grease here go ahead and coat those again should be good like that now let's go ahead and uh, grab your brackets here So it looks like there's a couple different ones here. So just grab your old ones, try to match them up to those. So it looks like these are the similar ones here, these longer ones. So yeah, it looks like these are them. But first go ahead and uh, Coat this again where the brackets go. Again, you don't really need much. Take your new brackets here. Go ahead and 
get them pressed in there. Like that. So it should look like that. All right, guys, and so for the rear rotors, same thing. I went with the uh, Power Stop Evolution coated ones. Part number AR8362 EVC. You can see this is for the rear. Open it up here. You can see it's just like the uh, fronts here. Same thing, they're not coated with anything, so we can install them without cleaning them. If you flip it over there, you can see the rear. So that's where your uh, parking brake shoes ride, right in there. So let's go ahead and uh, stick this on. So before we put our rotor on, let's go ahead and uh, put the piston inside the caliper here. And uh, again, I'm just gonna use the old brake pad here. And this time I'm gonna use uh, this style here. And normally there's a little plate on here, but it's broke. But with this style, what you wanna do, let me unscrew this some here. You get this plate back behind the uh, caliper here. So kind of like that. And then what you do is we'll go ahead and start tightening this and that'll start to compress that uh, piston back into the caliper there. Right there, once it stops, back it out. And we should be good there. All right guys, so really quick here, I just wanna show you. So these parking shoes look okay, so I'm not worried about changing them out, but I wanna show you here. So this is that rubber plug I'm talking about. So you access this from behind here. You can see me pushing on it, but you'll pull that out from the backside here and then you'll be able to see this dial with all these teeth on it. So what you wanna do is you stick a screwdriver in there through the back here, and then you can turn it either way. And if you turn it counterclockwise, so like that, that's going to uh, bring the shoes inward. And if you do clockwise, that's gonna bring them outer more towards your rotor. So if you can't get this rotor off, you'll, uh, Go ahead and turn that counterclockwise and that'll bring these uh, shoes in. That way you can get your rotor off. Then once you stick your new rotor on, you can uh, just double check and you want those uh, to barely be dragging on that new rotor. And so what I'm gonna do, since I was able to get this rotor off with no issues, just it was rusted on there, I'm just gonna turn this dial clockwise a couple turns here. And as I'm doing that, that's bringing those shoes outward. So I'm gonna say right about there, we'll call that good. Let me go on more. So then go ahead and grab your new rotor. Again, just make sure that's all clean. Go ahead and get that in place. and slide that on and you can see there's a little bit of resistance putting this on that's because this is a new rotor so those shoes are rubbing up against the uh, inside of this rotor here but I also since I adjusted that a couple turns that brought those shoes outward but I'm still able to get this uh, rotor on just fine so I'm gonna call that good like that so then grab a caliper bracket here Go ahead and get that put back in place. Get your two bolts here. Grab your torque wrench and you're gonna torque those to 81 foot pounds.
And then just like the fronts, go ahead and take your brake pad here, get you some of your lube, put it on the back side here, rub that around. And then just go ahead and put a little bit here on the ears. Again, don't get any on the uh, brake pad itself there. So what you want to do is go ahead and just kind of grab it like this and then you'll stick it in kind of at an angle and then we'll turn it inward. So kind of go in like that. Just want to get these past uh, your clips here. So kind of like that. And then you can go ahead and uh, get your bottom one in down there. And then your top one here. Looks like I'm getting caught on that clip there. There we go. So kind of get that one set in on the top there. And then just kind of push that one in. So just like that. Let's go ahead and do the back side. So same thing for your inside one here. Go ahead and kind of get that in place there. Get your top one in. So like that, go ahead and squeeze those together. Go ahead and grab your caliper and let's go ahead and get that slid over. Again, you may have to push these in just to get that to go over that. Grab your two bolts. And try to get those started. Let's go ahead and get those snugged up. And then go ahead and grab your torque wrench and we're going to torque those to 23 foot pounds. And it looks like I'm not going to be able to get my torque wrench on here. So just go ahead and uh, guesstimate on uh, 23 foot pounds there, which isn't that much. Go ahead and give that one more spray just in case there's any dirt or grease on there. Wheel and tire, go ahead and throw that on. Go ahead and grab your jack and let's go ahead and get this jack stand out of here. And go ahead and torque that to 130 foot pounds. All right, so with the passenger rear done, I'm gonna go ahead and move on to the driver rear. I'm not gonna record that side. And uh, once I get that done, I'll come back. All right, guys, so I went ahead and got the uh, driver rear all done here. Same exact procedure as the uh, passenger side there. All right, guys, so then just go ahead and take a look at your brake master cylinder here. And now you can see with all four uh, wheels done and our uh, pistons compressed into our calipers, that rows are level now. So now we are uh, completely full on fluid. Uh, we don't need to add any. If you guys are still low and you want to go ahead and add some, um, it says on here to use DOT3, but you can also use DOT4 because uh, DOT3 and 4 is compatible with each other. So if you need to, you can go ahead and just uh, top that off. So then you can go ahead and uh, put your little access panel back on here as well. Oops. And then here's what I'm talking about. So you can see it says right here to use DOT3. So one last thing you wanna do is uh, you wanna press down on your brakes here or pump them, cause this is probably gonna sink to the floor since the uh, pistons are pressed into the calipers. So just go ahead and 
press it here. You can see that went to the floor. So just pump it a couple times and you can see it gets stiff. Okay guys, so one last thing we need to do is break in the new pads to these uh, rotors. And uh, Power Stop's pretty adamant about doing this. And it says here on the uh, pad box, uh, this is to prevent uh, rotor warping. And then they want you to do this as soon as possible, uh, right after the install. So what you wanna do, just kind of find you an open road, uh, something where there's no traffic or anything. This is close to my house. So I was able to uh, go lightly on my brakes until I got here. And then what you wanna do, you can see right here, it says we need to perform 30 decelerations from 30 miles per hour and then you're gonna hit your brakes until you get down to five miles per hour. And they want you to leave 30 seconds in between brake applications for cooling. So again, they want you to do this 30 times. So you're gonna get up to 30 miles per hour, slam on your brakes till you get down to five, let off, and then just keep uh, continuing this procedure for 30 times. So let's go ahead and try this here. Let me get it in gear. So I'm gonna get up to uh, 30 miles an hour here. And then you guys wanna pay attention to behind you and make sure there's no traffic, for, especially when you start slamming on the brakes. So get up to 30. And now I'm gonna slam down to five miles per hour, let off, continue on. I'm gonna let this cool for uh, 30 seconds or so. And then you ha if you have to take turns, just try and take the turns without uh, using your brakes. So that's probably good there. I'm gonna get up to 30 again. And then we'll go ahead and slam on the brakes. Down to five, let off. And you can see here, I gotta take a turn. So I'm gonna try not to use my brakes. So that was two times. We got 27 more to go here. Again, I'm just gonna go kind of slow here, let those brakes cool. It's probably good there, get back up to 30. Drop down to five. Off. Keep going here. So I'm not going to record this whole thing, but I think you guys kind of get the idea of what I'm doing here. So now I need to go ahead and uh, do this 26 more times, and then those uh, brake pads should be broken in, and we should be good. All right, so that's going to be it for the video. Again, this was a 2016 Chrysler 300. Went ahead and replaced the front and rear brake pads and then also new rotors as well. So hopefully this video helps you out. Pretty simple job to do on these cars. Uh, this will also cover the Dodge Charger as well since it shares the same chassis and everything on this. So, And if you haven't already, why don't you subscribe to my channel. Check out my other videos. I got a bunch on this car alone and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.